Separates you from God, friends. We've already seen since we've been out here people looking at the signs. Spiritual forces of wickedness are already in this place. But God is calling you to Himself. God is calling you to repentance. Acts chapter 17, the Bible says that God commands all men everywhere to repent. Yes, sir. Because there is coming a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness. Lives. All lives matter. That's why I'm out here. But doing that, you just demonstrate yourself like you're a piece of meat. Why would you do that? Uh, actually, Psalm 5 5 says that the boastful will not stand in your sight. God hates all workers of iniquity. Got to deal with the Bible now, man. Psalm 5 5 says the boastful will not stand in your sight. God hates all workers of iniquity. Psalm 7 11 says that God is angry with the wicked every day. Psalm 11, 5 says that the Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence, God's soul hates. Now, why is it that the Bible says this? Why does God have a holy hatred for those that continue in their sin? Because of what Romans chapter 5 says in the yes, New sir. Testament. It says, yes, for when we were still without strength in due yes, time, sir. Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is why God is angry with the wicked every day. Because God provided his son as a sacrifice for sin. So if you reject this message, if you reject the gospel of Jesus Christ, if you reject the son, you have no life. There's nothing else more that God the Father could have provided for you. He loves you enough that he died for you, so you would never see the lake of fire for all of eternity. But the problem is your sin, friends. Your sin separates you from God. God is calling you to come out from among the world, to be separate. That's what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. He's calling you out from among the world to be separate. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. See, God is actually calling you to come out from among the world yep. because your sin cut you off from God. In fact, the Bible there, says that like God does like such a spirit of hatred of against God here. Like the Bible actually says that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you proof right now. You can look it up on your smartphone. Yeah. Psalm 66, verse 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. It says in Proverbs that the Lord does no, not sir. hear the prayers of the wicked, but the righteous. First Peter chapter 3 says, The Lord's eyes are on the righteous and his ears open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. John chapter 9 in the New Testament says that God does not hear the prayers of sinners. The only prayer that God will hear from a sinner is a prayer of brokenness and contrition willing to give up their sin. A prayer of repentance. Yeah. Friends, you can't keep your sin and keep Jesus Christ. 
See, we're out here on this street corner. I know we look like fools. We look like court jesters. And the Bible prophesies about this. It speaks about this. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. News, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. News, man. For it is written, God will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Friends, he's calling you out from your sin. Your sin cuts you off from God. It separates you from God. See, the Bible says, and I want to prepare you for this because you guys are probably not going to like it in this community, but truth sounds like hate to those who hate the truth. So here's the truth. You stand condemned before God because of your sin. But you don't have to remain that way if you give up your sin and turn in faith to Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting at verse 9, says this. A basic list of some sins that will keep you from the kingdom of God. And this was written by the Apostle Paul under inspiration of the Holy Spirit to Christians in Corinth. So he's actually addressing Christians at Corinth. News. And he says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators. Well, you can say it's horse manure all you want, young man, while you stand there in that car, but don't be a coward. Stand up for your belief. Look at me. I'm just a little dude, man. You can't talk to me. You're just going to say BS and tuck in your little cheap car there and drive off? Come on now. Stand up for what you believe in. Christians don't fight. Just so you know, Christians don't fight. All right? We love our enemies. So if you want to talk, we'll talk to you. Because we want people to be saved. You need to hear the truth. Because the problem is most churches in America are not telling you the truth today. I have a church myself, a little home small fellowship. And they're telling you all, all you got to do is just confess Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And fight Jesus in your heart. Say a certain prayer. And you're going to sin till the day you die. That's why you need Jesus. That's not why you need Jesus. You need Jesus because you've sinned against God. And you need Jesus to keep you holy, to give you the power to go and sin no more. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 11, with the adulterous woman, he told that woman to go and sin no more. Yeah, I remember. John chapter 5, verse 14, Jesus said, See, you've been made well. Go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. That's Jesus' message, to go and sin no more, friends. He's commanding you to go and sin no more. Now, I'm not saying you can do it in your own power. That's why you need Jesus. Across the street, is that guy coming to talk? Maybe. Now, see, many Americans, they know John 3, 16. Maybe. Yeah. The thing is that it looks Jesus like keeps is. speaking yeah. after John 3, 16. I think he might be All the way to verse 21. He almost looks like that Muslim. In John 3, 16, oh, yeah, many true. Americans know it because it sounds really ear-tickling. But see, Jesus kept speaking all the way to verse 21. It says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, yeah. but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Notice it says, might Amen. be saved. Not that you will be saved. God is crashing the party with his word. You've got to turn from your sin and turn in faith to him. And then he goes on in verse 18 and says, He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe in him is condemned already. Because he's not believed in the name of the early begotten Son of God. So yes, Jesus came into the world not to condemn you. Because if you're still sinning, you're already condemned. He came into the world to save you. To save sinners. To actually save you from committing sin. Not just the penalty from your sin. To actually deliver you from the power of sin. And then he goes on at verse 19 and explains the condemnation. Jesus said, and this is the condemnation. That men love darkness, their sin, rather than the light, because their deeds, their works, were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest their deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. See, he's calling you out, friends. He's telling you to come out from your sin, come out from darkness. And that you can do your works before God because God is living in you. See, Jesus said in John chapter 3, unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. 
Unless a man is born of water and spirit, he will not enter the kingdom of God. Look, there's another one convicted. Good job. Now all you got to do is humble yourself and repent. Am I your number one preacher or is that your IQ? You can engage me. Hey, I talked to, uh, I was on OSU campus this week. Let's see if you can defend your position. Come on up here and talk to me. Don't be a coward walk away now. See, I used to be a wicked sinner myself, friends. Every other word out of my mouth was the F word. I used to fornicate. I used to get drunk. I used to get high. I used to have sex outside of marriage. Have you noticed that I the used music? To lie. Uh, I was satanic. There. Did it? I'm literally covered in satanic like tattoos. I was God. wicked. <laughs> I didn't even believe yeah, in Jesus like 16 years ago until he called me to repentance. Good news, man. He told me to pick up the Bible and come follow me. So I did it. I picked up the New Testament, started reading it, and I quickly discovered that what most churches, what most professing Christians are telling people are lies. Can you say? They're tickling your ears, thinking you can sit up and go to God. Well, they're hearing us. Because you invited Jesus in your heart. Yeah, they are. But that's not what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Jesus said. Can you say? Thank you. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will like inherit the kingdom of God, but he who does right. the will of my Father in heaven. See that? That could I be the enemy trying to stop If you just confess Jesus exactly. Christ, I think Lord, Lord, Lord but you're not doing the will of God, in this situation you will not see the kingdom direct. of heaven. It's more like and then he goes on and he says, this is more for many like, are going to say to me in yeah. that day, but Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? And I will say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So there's going to be many that come to Jesus Christ that day and say, but, 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 but Lord, uh, I gave my money right to the poor. <laughs> I don't have a speaker. I was a pretty nice person. I helped that old lady across the street. I tied the church. I went to church on Sundays. I got dipped in some water. Lord, let me in. And he's going to say, it's no, now, I man. never knew you. Message. I never knew you. You who practice sin. If you're still practicing sin, you will not see heaven. Good news, sir. Don't let any man deceive you. Sure, your sin feels good for a season, feels good to the flesh, but it won't feel good in eternity when you're on fire. And that's why Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world good news, sir. and loses his own soul in the end? And what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? Jesus never said, if you want to be saved, invite me in your heart, confess me as your Lord and Savior. Yes, sir. No, I didn't say such nonsense, friends. Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. That's what Jesus preached. Jesus preached death to you, not suicide, but you laying down your life. See, Jesus said very hard things, friends. Sir. In Matthew chapter 7, or Matthew chapter 10, oh, man, you're convicted. Why don't you turn to Jesus? Jesus said, do not think I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves his own life more than me is not worthy of me. This is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10. And he said, he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who seeks to save his life now will lose it. But whoever loses his life right now for my sake and the gospel shall save it. See, you got to lose your life now. you got to give up your life now. See, Proverbs says there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Romans 6.23 says, News. the wages of sin Turn is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, that's the wages of sin. Now, we know it's not speaking of physical death. You're all still here if you're still sinning. So the wages of sin is not physical death. It's eternal yes, death, sir. the lake of fire. That's what Jesus said. That's not what I'm saying. I'm giving you the Bible verses. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So if you want eternal life, you, don't get angry you must give up your sin yeah. and surrender yeah, your life to Jesus yeah. Christ because he surrendered his life for you, friends. We're preaching to He died for your sins. Yeah. Not to keep you in your sin. 
to deliver you from your sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And Jesus Christ's blood is willing, able, abundantly powerful to wash you from your sins. And waving the message off, sir, is not going to help you. You will not wave Jesus off in the day of judgment. You'll be crying and weeping and gnashing your teeth. That's what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 13, starting at verse 41, Jesus said that the Son of Man is going to send out his angels, gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and cast them yes. into a furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing yes, of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. Notice I'm giving you Bible verses, not my opinion. My opinion means nothing. I'm just a man. Well, that's what you say. Yeah, that's what you say, but you're not God. So it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what I say. It matters what the Word of God says. And this, sir. Thank you. Well, you want to prove that? Well, come on up and talk to my brothers then. Come on over. We'll lovingly talk to you. No problem. That's what we're here for. We're here to talk to anybody, man. Yes, friends, God is calling you to repentance. He's calling you to come out from your sin. Look, two more that are convicted. The Holy Spirit is working. Hallelujah. Woo, all right. This is, God really did want us here today. We were praying about this, and God led us to this very spot. This is amazing. But, you know, instead of walking away with your middle finger, is that your IQ, or am I your number one preacher? Come on up and talk to me. My brothers are back here. They'll engage you. Come on and talk. Don't walk away. See, Revelation 21.8 says the cowardly, the unbelieving, abominable, murderers, Those sexually girls immoral, must be very convicted. sorcerers, so idolaters, and all liars will have their part in the lake that burns with Praise fire God. and brimstone, which is Amen. the second death. Now, notice it does not say all liars except if you confess Jesus Christ. No, it's, it's all lying. So if I leave this street corner and, yeah, I, I, and I go back to lying, I'm going to the lake of fire if I don't repent. If I don't turn from that line. <laughs> right? Christians do not sin every day against God. That is a lie from the pits of hell. What's that? Is, is. Well, Jesus wasn't black, but he wasn't white either. And he didn't have long hair. He wasn't white. He didn't have blue hair. Blue eyes. I'm sorry. Blue eyes. He was a Middle Eastern Jewish man. He was probably olive complected. But Jesus doesn't care about your race. You may want to read Revelation. Because the gospel is going to be preached to all tribes, all tongues, all, na all nations. So if you're, if you're trying to be racist, Jesus hates racism. Yes, sir. Jesus does not care about skin color. Yes, it's not about your skin color. It's a sin problem, not a skin problem. Jesus came for all people. That if they humble themselves and give up their sin and turn in faith to him, they can be saved. See, Jesus said in Luke chapter 13, verse 3, Unless you repent, you will all likewise yes, perish. Luke 13, 3. Acts 3, 19 says, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. He's willing, friends, to refresh you in his presence. Amen. But his condition, friends, you must give up your sin. You must repent. Now, how, now, many churches today are trying to tell you that repentance isn't actually turning from your sin. It's just turning from not believing in Jesus to believing in Jesus. Well, that's part of it. Still sin, but turning from that, it's much <laughs> more than that. Now, how do we know that? Here's a Bible verse yeah, for you. Matthew right chapter 12, verse 41. Yeah. Jesus said that the men of Nineveh are Jesus. going to rise up in the judgment and condemn this generation because they repented at the preaching no, of Jonah, oh, and indeed it greater than Jonah is here. Now go to Jonah chapter 3, verse no, 10 sir. in the Old Testament, and we'll see what the men of Nineveh did. No, verse 10 says, the men of Nineveh gave up their evil, turned from the violence that was in their hands. God saw their works and changed his mind not to destroy that city. So Jesus is here correlating repentance with being like the Ninevites, turning from your evil ways. And that's why Isaiah says, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doing from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. 
Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat from the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. Guess what that sword is? The sword that's going to come out of the Lord Jesus' mouth when he comes back and destroys his enemies. The literal word of God coming out from his mouth. He's coming back to defeat his enemies. Are those middle fingers? I can't really tell. Is that your IQ or am I your number one preacher? You guys can come up and talk to us. My brothers are back here. We'll talk to you. Coward. Yeah, don't be coward. You can come up and talk. Christians don't fight. We love our enemies. Come on up and talk to us. Well, that you won't be waving by to Jesus on the day of judgment. It'll be more like this. Please, Jesus. Please, I'm sorry. Please let me in. And Jesus is going to say, no, no. Remember when I sent that crazy white guy out on the street corner holding that sign and looked like a complete idiot? Yeah, he was my messenger preaching to you in love, calling you out of your repentance, and you rejected it. So guess what? Eh, access denied. You're not in heaven. That's what he's going to say to you. But I don't want that for you. I want you to be saved. I used to be way worse than probably many of you out here. I used to be way worse, friends. In fact, I deserve hell more than most of you people out here. How do I know that? I'll give you a testimony. I knew God for seven years, and then I went back to my sin for seven years. I deserve hell more than most of you people out here. But by God's mercy and God's grace, he called me back. And I will never walk away from Jesus Christ again. Because I deserve to die for all of eternity for what I did to him. Thank you. Jesus took it all for you on the cross. Your sin was laid upon him. Yeah, amen. Isaiah prophesied about this 700 years before Jesus Christ. He was wounded for our, your transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we can be healed. All we like sheep have been led astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Jesus Christ is a scapegoat. Your sin was laid upon him on the cross. Not that he became a sinner. He became a sin offering to deliver you from your sin. Colossians says he, you've been delivered from darkness and conveyed to the kingdom of the son of his love. That's what God's wanting to do for you. But if you're in your darkness right now, you haven't been delivered. It doesn't yes, matter what you say with the mouth. Yes, sir. See, the apostle John said, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this, we will know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. You can have assurance before God in your works. Not that you're doing it in your own power. We're not speaking of this heretical nonsense of Catholicism or Mormonism or Jehovah Witnesses or Islam. You can't earn your way to heaven. Try doing that nonsense before a judge. Let's say you sin three times a day, 365 days a year. That's over 1,000 criminal acts before God in one year. Multiply that by five, that's over 5,000 criminal acts committed against God. Now try standing before a judge and saying, but judge, I helped that lady across the street. I gave my money to the poor. I went to church. I was a pretty good person. Good. That ain't going to work. He's oh, got to wow. uphold his law. I'm going to give those out because this is Ohio. He's here. But Jesus fulfilled the law for you. Not to keep you in your sin. He fulfilled the law because we could not keep the law in our own strength. And the Apostle Paul speaks about this in Galatians chapter 2. He says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by, by the works of the law, no yeah. flesh will be justified in his sight. That's true. You can't be justified by the law of God, the Mosaic law of God. But he goes on with that same train of thought and says, but if, while we seek to be justified in Christ, we ourselves also are found to be sinners. Is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things that I destroyed, the sin in my life, those things that I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. I, through the law, died to the law, that I might live to God. It is no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. There's no power in the law. 
there's power and grace. The grace of God is the power of God to go and sin no more, friends. See, 1 John chapter 1, starting at verse 5, says this. This is the message we have heard from Jesus and declare to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with God and walk in darkness, our sin, yes, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Okay, bro. Notice the, the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ is conditioned upon you walking in the light as Christ is yes, in the light. Can this, sir? Mm -hmm. See, in Proverbs 8, it says that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth God hates. Hebrews 1 9 says that the Lord Jesus loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. If you're claiming you love Jesus, why are you doing the things that he hates? He opposes these things, friends. These things separate you from God. But in Isaiah 50, 59 verses 1 through 2, it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, nor is ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God, and your sin have hidden his face from you, so he will not hear. God is not hearing the prayers of those that continue in their sin. And God is no respecter of persons. If I go back to my sin, God's not listening to my prayers until I repent. Until I forsake my sin and turn back in faith to Jesus Christ. See, 1 John chapter 3 talks about this, abiding in Jesus Christ. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. Just as he, Jesus, is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. That's why Jesus Christ was manifest in the flesh. To destroy the works of the devil. What are these works of the devil? Sinning, friends. So if sinning has not been destroyed in your life, you have not been set free and you're not saved. You are not in Christ. You are abiding in death. And the wages of sin is death, the lake of fire for all of eternity. That's what Jesus preached. <clears throat> Jesus said, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It would be more profitable for you to enter into life only having one eye than having both your eyes to be thrown into the everlasting fire. If your hand or your foot causes you to sin, pluck them off and cast them from you. It would be more profitable for you to enter into life, only having one hand or one foot, and to be thrown into the everlasting fire where the one does not die in the fire and is not quenched. Now friends, Jesus is speaking in hyperbole, because you can pluck out the eye, keep one eye, it's still lust. He's speaking in hyperbole, he's telling you to do what it takes to get the sin out of your life because you're gonna see the lake of fire for all of eternity. This is what Jesus preached, friends. See, John chapter five, Jesus said, well, you won't be giving Jesus a thumbs down on the day of judgment. I don't wanna waste paper. See, Jesus said in John chapter five, verse 28 through 29, Jesus said, behold, do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. The resurrection of condemnation, friends. Do you hear what Jesus said? Now, he's not telling you you can earn your way in, but if you're in Christ, you're living holy and obedient. Even Peter spoke about this under yes. inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He said, as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, so you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. And if you look, if you call upon the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, 
knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He's calling you out from among yes, the man. world, from among your sin, as obedient children walking like Christ walked. Now you can't do it in your own power. That's why you need Jesus. See, Jesus correlates yes. salvation. He gives the picture of what salvation is in John chapter 15. He said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. I, 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 Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, the Father God takes away. And, a little and less every branch in me that bears right fruit, the Father fruits, they may bear more fruit. A little more grace now think of what Jesus is saying. See these trees you're in front of you? are speaking the truth, you see the unfortunately the way in which it's being done, Jesus is I think you're pushing people away. If you're a Christian, if you're claiming to be a Christian, we give them the truth. Jesus, the truth is great. I love it. That's all we're going to preach. That's what Jesus Priest, right? Yeah, I think, but he also talked about grace a lot. So yeah, but what, what is grace? Find the right uh, combination between. What is grace, though? Grace, well, grace is basically like, hey, Jesus said, um, you know, go and sin no more, right? To the, to the, the harlot, if you will, yeah. right? And, and he didn't condemn her, and he didn't stone her. He just said, hey, you know. So I, I don't want to well, get into the whole thing, but, but I'm saying, well, the grace, the grace of God teaches us to live righteous. So that that's what we're. We're preaching. We're preaching the full counsel of God. And they gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burned. So you're not once saved, always saved either. That's a heresy being taught in America today. Well, that's the world. You're not once saved, always saved. Calvinism is not the gospel. Any Calvinists out here, we, we'd love to talk to you. Because Calvinism was started by a wicked man named John Calvin, a murder, murderous demonic, barbaric beast of a man of the Reformation. He wasn't, of his, he wasn't of God, he was of his father, the devil. Calvinism is a false gospel. You're not once saved, always saved. There is no perseverance of the saints unless you're abiding in Jesus Christ. And it's conditioned, it's synergistic. It's conditioned upon you abiding in Jesus Christ. That's where you play this part. Not that you're earning anything, but you have free will. You must submit your free will to God. Now, how do we abide in Jesus Christ? Well, he explains that in verse 9 of John chapter 15. He says, as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Well, okay, Jesus, how do I abide in your love? Well, he answers that in verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So he answers how you abide in him, by keeping his commandments, not your own power, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And you receive the Holy Spirit when you humble yourself, when you turn from your sin, not, not hanging on to your sin with pride and arrogance, thinking you're okay with God. Because the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none who does good. Now you need to understand Romans 3. He's not speaking to those who are abiding in Jesus Christ. He's trying to break through to his readers that you Jews who have your law of Moses, you think you're special because you have the ordinances of God. And you think you can mix the works of the law with the works of faith. It don't work that way. You got to get cut off from the law and be married to Christ. You got to go to Christ. He's your strength. Yes, sir. And that's what he said. So if you think you're righteous without Jesus Christ, you're deceived. You're a sinner and you're of your father. The devil is what Jesus preached. What the apostle John said. See, 1 John chapter 2, starting in verse 3. This confirms who a Christian is. Now by this we know that we know Jesus. If we keep his commandments. He who says, I know Jesus, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in Jesus ought himself also to walk just as Christ walked. Now wait a minute. Most churches are telling you today you can't be like Jesus. That's impossible. You're going to sin till the day you die. But the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 Do we believe that or not? Can he deliver you from your sin? Romans 6 says What then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may yes, abound? Well, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? See, you've, been, you've died to sin. That's what it takes to be a Christian. you got to die to yourself. 
you got to lay your life down and turn to Jesus Christ in childlike faith. Think about a child, friends. Jesus said, unless you convert and become as a little child, you'll by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Which means you're not going to be in heaven unless you convert as a little child. Now think of a little child, friends. If you have children, think of your children. They put all their being and trust in you. They can't survive without you. They can't live without you. It's the same with Jesus Christ. You can't do this without him. You can't live without him. But oh friends, your sin, it cuts you off from God. And Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. For either you will hate the one and love the other, or else you'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God in riches. You can't serve God in America. You can't serve God in your idols. It's got to be God first, then everything else. That's the message of Jesus Christ preached, friends. That's the message of the gospel. It truly is good news. He delivers you from the bondage of sin. Romans 6 says this. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, you've been dead to sin when you become a Christian. You're dead to sin. And he goes on, he says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. So here's the Apostle Paul of Romans 6, speaking to Christians at Rome, that sin will not have dominion over you. It won't have rule. It won't have rule, control, you will not be a slave to your sin because you're under grace. But then he says, what then? Shall we sin because we're not under law but under grace? Absolutely not. Do you not know that to whom you present yes, yourself slaves to obey? Yes, sir. You are that one yes, slave to you obey, whether of sin leading to death, the eternal death, the lake of fire, or obedience leading to righteousness. Friends, you live in America and you think you're free, but you're slaves. You're slaves to your sin if you're still sinning. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 8. And this Starting in verse 34, Jesus said, Whoever commits sin is a slave to sin, and a slave will not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son, if Jesus sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Now, according to Jesus in John chapter 8, verse 34 through 36, yes, what does Jesus about actually Jesus Christ. set you free from? It's about the Jesus. Sin, the Jesus says so, Camino. Or does he literally set you free uh -huh. from being a slave? And who's the slave? The one who commits sin. So if you're committing sin, it controls you. It rules you. And you're a slave. Yes. I used to be a slave to my sin. And see, many churches try to correlate that yes, to sir. Romans chapter 7 with the Apostle Paul. See, he was talking about his pre-conversion. Yes, a man under the law, a Pharisee of Pharisees. And the Apostle Paul said, what I want to do that's good, I end up not doing. But the evil that I don't want to do, I end up doing. Yes, and many of these lying, reprobate, deceptive, satanic churches today are trying to tell you that's yes, the Christian law. They're lying to you. They're from the pits of hell or they're deceived. Because the Apostle Paul goes on in Romans 8, chapter, verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, meaning you're sinning, but according to the Spirit. For the law yes, of the sir. Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The man in Romans chapter 7, verse 14 through 25, is a man who is still under the law of Moses, trying to keep righteousness in his own power, and he couldn't do it. But once he surrendered his life, he was crucified with Christ. God gave him the Holy Spirit, the literal Spirit of God to live in him, and he was set free. And 2 Corinthians 5 speaks about this, that all the old has passed away, behold, all has become new. And that's what he's wanting to do to you, friends. To make you new. To wash you from your sin. See, the Bible says, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Yes, sir. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. 
Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. You about, you about ready to preach? You sure. preach next or one? Oh, I can preach. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Good news, sir. Uh, we're good. What, where are you guys from? Where are you, or what's the... I live in a... I live in a... Yeah, I can't walk, man. Or like, what's the... Uh, what I, org are you from? Sorry. I live in Ohio. These brothers are from Georgia. But yeah. like, what, what org are you from? Is this oh, I got one. Christian. But like, oh, what yeah, thing? Like, what do you mean what thing? Or like, is there a specific group? No, I'm not part of any denomination. Did you want to preach? Uh, Let me see the card. Oh. Test, test, test. I don't want to blow your ear out, bro. The Bible says that it's appointed once for man to, to live. It's appointed once for man to die. And after this, the judgment. You only live this life once. And many, many of you live by the, by the motto YOLO, where you only live once. But it, but if you had that that life, if you if you looked at life that way, my friends, you would really see that your life is but a vapor. The Bible says that your life is but a vapor. Many of you have seen a vape cloud before. If you've ever seen a vape cloud, you see that it's here one second and then gone the next. What 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 will a man give in exchange for his soul? How precious are your eyes to you? How precious is one eye to you? You wouldn't give a hundred million dollars for, for, for one eye. So how much more is your soul? How much more is your soul worth to you? Because your soul, your soul is eternal. Your soul will live forever. After you die, you will live forever either in heaven or in hell and if you're living in sin you will go to hell but the hope is that you would turn from your sin the hope is Jesus Christ that he's not willing that any should die and go to hell he wants all men everywhere to repent to believe in the gospel that means you can have eternal life today but you see in America, many people already think they're in heaven. Many people think that them living it up is already heaven for them. So why, why, why seek heaven through Jesus Christ? But those, those who are broken over their sin, those who finally get off their high horse and are at rock bottom, while well, Jesus, his arms are still wide open. In fact, you know, the only prayer that Jesus hears from sinners is a broken and contrite heart, heart of contrition, a prayer of, 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 of brokenness, a prayer of repentance. Oh, my friends, turn from your sin because Jesus Christ, he will judge you for everything you've done. Every, every idle word a man speaks shall be brought up in judgment against him. Jesus is ready to judge this world. You know, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But many people still trample the Son of God and his sacrifice under his feet, under their feet. Many people are haters of God out here. Many people hate the word of God. In fact, I had, a, I had an old man come up to me and tell us a little less truth and more grace. A little less truth. So he, he basically wants us to lie to you. And you know, the Bible actually says that in the last days, men will not endure sound doctrine. Men will not endure sound doctrine. You go to these churches to be lied to, to be comforted in your sin, to be comforted in your drunkenness, in your fornication, in your homosexuality. But these things are sin before God, before a holy and righteous God. And he will judge you. 
He will judge you according to your deeds, according to this life. How are you living this life? What are you doing with Jesus? What are you doing with Jesus today? Are you just blaspheming his name? Are you using his name as a swear word? Oh, he's much more than that. You ought to praise him for dying on the cross for you. You ought to praise God for his love and his goodness because it's by his goodness that leads men to repent. And God's goodness is this, that he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross. He came down from, he came down from heaven for majesty to die on the cross for all mankind to be saved. And he also rose again on the third day. He also rose again so that we may also rise on the day that he returns. But my friends, you will not rise with Christ if you're still living in sin. If you're still living in sin, Jesus Christ is coming back for a spotless bride. He's coming back for a bride that does not have any spots or wrinkles. You wouldn't, you wouldn't marry someone in a wedding dress that is filthy. So why, why do you expect Jesus, Jesus Christ to come back for a filthy bride? He's not coming back for, for sinners. He's coming back for people who are saints, who have been washed, who have been cleaned of their sin, cleansed of all their unrighteousness. And when you come to Jesus Christ, when you have truly repented, you do not have to continue in sin. You don't have to take on the, the title of a sinner anymore unless it stands true that you are one. Because what makes someone a sinner, what makes someone a sinner is someone who lives in sin, someone who sins. So are you living in sin? Or are you living in God's will? Because you can't choose both. Jesus said himself that you cannot serve God and serve mammon. You can't serve this world. You can't serve two masters. You can't, you can't serve yourself and serve God. But many people are trying to do both. They're, they're trying to live for themselves. They're trying to serve themselves. You're convicted, sir. Turn from your sin. Turn from your sin. They live to serve themselves Monday through Saturday. And then they put on a Christian costume on Sunday. And it's all acting. It's all acting. It's like a big Hollywood movie. We have many, many Christian actors in the churches, many professing believers in the churches who think that their sinful life is something that God is pleased with or that's something that God overlooks. That's, a, that's, not, a, that's not what it, what he does at all. You know, he will remember everything. Everything will be brought up against you on the day of judgment. Everything you said, everything you've done, and you know, you won't remember the good times, quote unquote, good times in hell. You're gonna remember times like this, all the opportunities you had to get right with God. And consider the consider this one of those opportunities to get right with God. Because God, He's a He's a merciful God. He's a loving God. And He wants to save all. He wants to save all from their sin. But not all want to be saved from their sin. Jesus Christ, he came down 2,000 years ago. He came down 2,000 years ago to die for all mankind. To die for the sins of the world. And to rise again on the third day. But my friends, 
many people are haters of God and not haters of sin. You you have to you ought to be a hater of sin and a lover of God because sin sin. Oh, you can talk. I'm, I'm preaching. Can you talk sin? Sin will always separate you from God. Sin will always separate you from God. Jesus Christ. He came to set the captives free from their sin. To set us free so we could live in freedom and victory. Be overcomers of sin. Please talk to him, sir. I'm preaching. Turn from your sin. Jesus Christ, he came to set he, he came to set us free so we could so we could walk in freedom. So we don't have to be slaves to sin, but rather slaves to righteousness. Turn from your sin. Turn from your sin. Turn from your sin. Jesus Christ. He's not worried about skin color. He's worried about sin. He's wor he's worried about sin. He's worried about sin. Sin is not judgment is not sin. Blasphemy is sin. Judgment is not sin. Because you made a judgment yourself. That's sin if you if you want to call it that. Because it's hypocritical judgment. Oh my friends, so many people are deceived. So many people are lost. So many people. So many people are lost in their in their sinful ways. And Jesus, He's willing to, to remove the blinders that were placed over your eyes that were placed over your eyes due to your own willful choice to sin against him. Because Satan has, has blinded, he has blinded you. He's blinded you if you're living in sin. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four. It says, "In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them." So, my friends, the God of this world is Satan. He's the prince of the power of the air. He's in the airway. He, he's, he has principalities. And many of you who are not spiritual, who, who are not born again, do not pay attention to, the, to these things. Because Jesus... eternity when's the last time you thought about your eternity well you ought to no you were made in the image of God cover up stop dressing like a prostitute stop dressing like a business because because if you dress like a business women you'll only get business because a true godly man, a true godly man, he, he, he loves a modestly dressed woman. He loves a modestly dressed woman. 
And, and many women wonder why men are dogs. Because they dress up like meat. But my friends, God has called you to be holy. He's called you to be set apart, to live holy as, as he is holy. And you can only do that in the strength of Christ. You can only do that in the power that Christ gives you. But you know, many people have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. They deny the power of it. They deny the power of God. What do you mean you can live holy? A lot of people don't believe they can be holy. A lot of people think that they have to continue to live in sin. You don't have to continue in sin because the Bible says in Romans 6, 1 through 2, how shall we, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Oh, don't you see the hypocrisy? People always call us out for being judgmental. That's a judgment right there. Oh, you're judgmental. You see the hypocrisy? My point exactly. We don't have a problem with judgment because the Bible, the only problem that, the, that God has with judgment is hypocritical judgment. As you see in Matthew 7, 1 through 5. Oh, turn from your sin. The Bible says a spiritual man judges all things in 1 Corinthians 2, 15. And in John 7, 24, it says to not judge by appearance, but to judge righteous judgment. It says to judge with righteous judgment. So if you're judging with hypocritical judgment, that's the judgment that is sinful. Because if you're telling us to stop judging, but then you're 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 judging us, that makes you a hypocrite. Oh, turn from your sin, turn from your worldliness, because this world, my friends, this world is is enmity with God. The love of this world is enmity with with God. And it's evident when we go out pretty much anywhere. People are angry at God. People are angry at God because they love their sin. Because number one, it's like it's like a spoiled brat angry with their parents because their parents have set rules to, to follow. Someone wanting to live in their sin is angry at the rules that God has set to keep them safe. But my friends, on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment when every knee bows and every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord, on that day, it'll be too late to try to get right with God. He'll show you all the, the blown chances that you, that you just blew away, that you just shrugged off. My friends, Turn from your sin. Turn from your sin. Turn to Jesus Christ. Drunkenness will send you to hell. Fornication will send you to hell. Lying will send you to hell. Oh, turn from your sin. Yeah, I preach. Yeah, I preach. All we like to see the 
you too, man. David, right? David, yeah. Just, like, just keep doing it like you're doing. I'm asking you to give, you, just give us money. How about salt? Okay, how about, okay, I'll give you more. I'm just giving you evidence. Here's salt 22. God bless you. That's a mistake. Stay out of my hands. Okay, well, I'll put your hands on top of my God, my God. I'll put your hands on Josh is trying to put on your face. Josh is don't worry about what she's doing. She's offended because they don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach you because they don't teach you. They don't teach
In the book of James, the letter to James, no, it turned to Jesus. The Bible says when somebody curses us, we bless them. I bless, I pray that God blesses you with repentance. No, he won't do that. He loves me. He loves me. It says in James, ye adulterers and adulteresses. What is an adulterer and an adulteress? It's a person who cheats on their husband, who has sex with another person other than their spouse. Yeah, you, woo! It's not going to be like that in, 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 in the lake of fire. You're going to be, ah! No, woo! No. Okay? You adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You see that? So those people that say, I believe in God, I know Jesus, I'm a Christian, I go to church on Sunday, and yet drink it up and smoke it up and have sex outside of marriage and are committing adultery on their wives and getting remarried all the time because of adultery, homosexuals, liars, drunkards, blasphemers, those people that say they love Jesus and yet do these things are showing themselves to be fake. Because Jesus said, ye shall know them by their fruit. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. You cannot mock God. You cannot deceive God with your lips. Love is not tolerance. It's not tolerance. Love does not accept sin. God's love doesn't. God's love is merciful. It's merciful to those that are willing to give up their sin for Jesus. Or else you reject him. You don't love Jesus if you're walking as a sinner. There's no such thing as a sinner and a Christian. No such thing. Because a true born-again believer has been washed from their sin. They are holy. The Bible calls Christians holy, dearly beloved. He calls Christians peculiar people because they're separate from the world and they're calling the world to Christ. But it says, do you think that the scripture, it says, but he gives more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud. Are you proud? Are you proud in your culture? Are you proud in America? Are you proud in your sexual orientation? Are you proud about the color of your skin? Are you proud about your job, your education? Pride. God resists the proud. There's a whole month that they celebrate Pride Month. The Bible says God resists the proud. Pride is arrogance. A, a feeling of pride makes you feel better about yourself above anybody else. That's what pride is. You think that your country is better than everybody else. You think that your gender is better than everybody else. You think that your sexual orientation is better. You think that your culture or your skin color is better than everybody else. That is pride. And the Bible says God resists the proud. God doesn't hear you if you're proud. And so what does it say in James? It says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God, because he gives more grace to the humble. The humble. God gives grace to the humble, not the proud. The proud he resists. The humble he gives grace to. So if you're in your pride, you think you're a tough guy, you think you can threaten people and act like you can beat everybody up, you're so tough. I had two people threaten me today. They're so tough. But yet, when they stand before God, guess what? They're going to be like little boys begging God to not throw them into the lake of fire. All their toughness will be sucked out of them. And they're no longer tough and courageous anymore in their flesh. Bullies. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. As Jesus said, humble yourself as one of these little children. What is a little child like? A little child is completely dependent on their parents. A little child is innocent, not a sinner. Children are not born sinners. The Bible doesn't teach that. They're innocent. Why would Jesus say, become like a little child if they're born sinners? 
that he would be saying, hey, become like a sinner. No. Humble, innocent, completely dependent, doesn't know what to do, doesn't know anything, very much anyway. This is what Jesus said to humble yourself. Not be a proud, tough guy, thinking you're tough, walking around, acting tough, acting proud, acting hard, hard-hearted. No, God is tougher than you, believe me. You're not going to be tough before God. You won't be tough before God. You think you're a tough guy now. You're not going to be tough before God Almighty. All your little courage, all your little toughness will be sucked right out of you when you see God Almighty in your sin. And so that's what God has commanded. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Somebody want to educate me or something? About how to do it? I'm going to go by the Bible, not by sinners' opinions. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And what is a sinner? Somebody who walks and commits sin. I can't even hear you, man. If you want to have a conversation, we can have a conversation. That's what a sinner is. Somebody who walks and commits and loves sin. You don't have to be a sinner anymore, man. Sinners go to the lake of fire because they reject God. The God who loves you and wants to deliver you out from under his wrath. He's offered you love. He's offered you love. You're not going to go to hell or to, to the kingdom of God as a homosexual. You're not going. Or as an adulterer or as a tough guy in pride. Or because you have sex outside of marriage. You're not going to the you're going to the lake of fire right now. The wrath of God is on a person, but God's love is calling you out from under his wrath through Jesus Christ. God's love is not man's love. He doesn't accept sin. He hates it. The Bible says he's angry with the, the wicked. It says he hates the workers of iniquity. But his love is calling you out from under his hatred. Because God does not want any man to perish or a woman. And so he says, cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to gloom. Don't have your laughter and your happiness in your sin. The Bible says to be, be in gloom. Be convicted by the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit do its work in your heart. Don't just walk by and laugh and have a good time in your sin. Because your sin is leading you to hell. No, I will not shut up. Your sin is leading you to hell. And God doesn't want you to go there. Don't you understand? He doesn't want you to go there. And he sent his only begotten son into the world to die on a cross. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. You won't lift yourself up anymore in your pride. You won't lift yourself up anymore. And the Bible says in the same letter, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Get all evil out of your life by the grace of God. By the grace of God. Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is the word from God, which is able to save your soul. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Do you see that? You're deceiving yourself. If you say you love Jesus and you don't do what he told you to do. That's deception, the Bible says in James. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. What did Jesus tell you to do? If you look upon a woman with lust, you've committed adultery with her already in your heart. And Jesus said not to do that. That's God's love. He's trying to show you where your life is headed in sin. There are going to be no homosexuals in the kingdom of God. Only ex-homosexuals. There are going to be no fornicators in the kingdom of God. Those that have sex outside of marriage. Only ex-fornicators. Yeah, you won't be lifting your fists and enjoying your sin in the lake of fire. 
You won't be enjoying it anymore. You only have a short time to enjoy your sin and reject God. And you're not going to say to God that he didn't love you, he didn't try to reach you. No, he's going to show you how many times you rejected his word. You rejected preachers that were trying to tell you the truth. Reading you the Bible and what it says in the word of God. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Be ye doers of the word. That's pretty dumb. Why would you hail the one that wants to kill you? That's the stupidest thing I hear people say is hail Satan. It's like a man who has a gun to a person's head and I'm about to kill you. And he says, hail to you, my murderer. That's what you've just done. Satan wants to destroy you. Satan wants to see you burning in the lake of fire because he hates you. And yet you say, hail Satan. As if that offends me. No, you're only, you're only showing your condemnation, young man. You're only showing your condemnation. But God, Jesus Christ, came that you might have life and life more abundantly. You think you have life now because you're having pleasure in your sin. Getting drunk, having sex outside of marriage, smoking it up getting high, being a homosexual, being a transgender, lying, blaspheming God. You might think you have pleasure in these things right now. But guess what? Those are the very things that you have pleasure in that are going to be the source of your condemnation when you die in this body. That's what the Bible says. That's why Jesus came. So that you would be delivered out of those sins. You don't have to show off your body. You don't have to undress yourself for the world. You don't have to be a lustful man or a lustful woman. Turn to Jesus. You don't have to be a tough guy in your pride acting like you're hard. If you love Jesus, then obey him and stop being a sinner. Okay, well, if you're a sinner and you say, I love Jesus, then you're an adulterer. If you're a sinner and you say you love Jesus, you're just playing yourself. I don't know if you're a sinner or not, but if you say you love Jesus and you walk in sin, then you're deceiving yourself according to the Bible. As Jesus said, Matthew 22, 36 through 40. It says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. But see, the world will interpret love as being accepting of people's sin and tolerates. And, 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 and they call calling people out of the sin hateful. And that, that confirms what the Bible said, that they'll call good evil and evil good. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 about God's love that it does not rejoice in sin. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth. In John 14 it says about those who say they love Jesus. John 14. We get a lot of that. John 14 and 15, it says, If you love me, Jesus speaking, if you say you love Jesus with your lips, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, the Holy Spirit. You see? So those that say they love Jesus and don't walk with Jesus, they're deceiving themselves. Because if you truly do love Jesus, then you have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will not lead you to sin. It'll keep you from sin. You're really mature, young man. Grow up. The Holy Spirit keeps you from sin. He doesn't lead you to sin. He doesn't make you feel good in your sin. He won't lead men to go and have sex outside of marriage and women to dress like they're in a bikini, showing off their bodies so they can get men. God's not going to lead you to do that. Oh, you're nasty, man. You got a little demon inside of you. Listen to the little demons laughing. You're not going to be laughing in hell, young man. 
You won't be laughing in hell. You'll be like, ah! So says the sinner. Yes, it's so funny. Guess what? You won't be around your boys either. You won't be around your boys acting all tough and hard like you're so cool. Now, you're going to stand before God. And he's going to throw you into the lake of fire in your sin if you don't know Jesus. You think you're so cool, man. But no more cool in hell. You're not going to be with your boys in hell. You're not going to be with these girls in hell. It's just torment, man. That's why Jesus had to come and die for you. So that you could be delivered from your sin. So that you could walk in the presence of God. In holiness. Yeah, you're so bold and tough, young man. You're so tough. All this, t all this fake courage that people have, you know, it's all going to be scared and fear when you stand before God. Fear the Lord, the Bible says. Jesus said, I'll tell you who you should fear. This is what Jesus said. Do not fear them that can kill the body and have nothing else they can do. I've been knocked out before. I've had people threaten to shoot me, stab me, beat me up, whatever, for preaching the gospel. But Jesus told me not to fear them, but fear God. Jesus said to fear him who after he's killed the body will throw it into hell. So who are you fearing today? Do you fear God? The Bible says fear God and depart from iniquity. Jesus says, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. You see that? So a lot of people can say they love Jesus. A lot of people can say, I'm a Christian, I love Jesus. But this is what Jesus said. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. We're not talking about the old Mosaic law. We're talking about what Jesus said in his, covenant, his new covenant. What Jesus said. Don't, don't yell, don't yell, man. Come over here and we'll talk. Come over here and we'll talk. What are you saying now? What is love? According to the Bible, according to God's love. Okay, what else? And it says that love does not rejoice in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth. Yeah, so here's my thing. Are you drunk right now? Have you been drinking? Yeah, I've been drinking. Okay, well then, you need to give up your drink. Okay, but that's a sin, bro. Why? Because it's hard drink, according to the Bible. What was Jesus' first miracle? Okay, so he made water into wine. Hold on, you're not drinking wine, first of all. Yeah, how do you you're know? drinking hard drink. You Second know? of all, the wine that they had... How do you know drink? Listen, how do you, know you want to learn? Yes. Okay. Well, the wine that he had was not the wine that is today. How do you know? Because. Because, because when you ferment a grape like that, but how do you know? it doesn't get that alcoholic. Yeah, like I said, there's, there's what, what are you con like considering alcoholic? Man. How do you know? If you get drunk... Do you get drunk in your life? Yeah, I do. Okay, so that's a sin. You're going to hell for that. Really? Yeah, that's what the Bible says. No drunkards will enter the kingdom of God. Now, it's love for me to tell you that. So, so, but, but if you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, are you going to heaven? No, not if you don't turn from your sins. So, so is the book of Romans... It doesn't say in the Bible to accept Christ. It doesn't say that. Okay, so if you go to the book of Romans, and they're talking about abusing grace and what you're given... And how are they abusing grace? By saying, oh, God forgives me. I can sin every day. That's what you're doing. Exactly. What's wrong? So, so the, the Bible's telling you not to do that. Show me where. Okay. You Which ready? One? You ready? Which Romans one? 6. This Romans is so easy. Does it tell me I'm going to hell? Yes. Will I do it? Yes. Show me where. All sinners. Show me where. Okay, I'll show you. You ready? Yeah. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 first. Well, first I'll show you here. No, no, no. Romans 6. Slaves to run. Okay. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Yeah, no, we shouldn't. Yeah. Okay, God forbid it, but go ahead. Where does it know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether sin unto death, that's condemnation, or to, of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were, past tense, not now, were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. What is that form of doctrine? The power of God and the salvation. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness, not sin. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. 
For as ye have yielded your members to servants to uncleanness and to iniquity in the past, he's talking about, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Are you even ashamed to get drunk anymore? Okay, then stop. God can give you power over it. For the end of those things is death. There you go, condemnation. Yeah. Yeah. So your drunkenness, the end of it is death, according to Paul in Romans 6. I can show you another one, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. But hey, you're, you're, not, you're not getting the point here. That, that doesn't mean I'm going to hell. Yes, it does. That's no, what that means right no, there. No, it doesn't. Have you ever sinned? Do you sin still? No, I don't. don't because sin. of the power of God. Yeah. We're not sinners anymore after Jesus. You're right. No, no, you're right. We're not, yeah. we're not sinners. We're saints. Right. But do you sin? Do you ask for forgiveness after you've received the Christ? Okay. Have I yeah. sinned yeah. since I've been born again? Yeah. I did. But that's not what the Bible teaches. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, we, hold on. We can walk in faith. Let's we, explain. We, let's we, explain we this. We can walk as saints. I get that. Listen, but, but, human experience isn't always what the Bible teaches. You see, the Bible teaches that you don't have to sin. No, you're right. You, you choose to sin. Exactly. The Bible teaches that God makes a way out of escape out of every temptation. True. True. The Bible says, submit to the Spirit yeah, not, and you will not fulfill yeah, the Jesus' saying Christ. Any of that's wrong. Right, so. Yeah, 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 that's but have you, but you, you're not doing that, man. But do you, but you're still out here partying up with the yeah, world. But, but do, you, do you sin? No, I don't. I don't. And you don't know that because you don't know Jesus. You don't know the power of God. I don't sin in Christ. Yeah, see? See, this is what I'm talking about. Let me tell you about people like this man. Jesus said this. And Matthew said, listen up, man. Let me tell you what Jesus said about people like you. In Matthew 7, this is what Jesus said. Not everyone that shall say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven. So you call Jesus Lord, and a lot of people do. But Jesus is saying, not everyone that says that to me is going to enter in. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Hey Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? What are wonderful works? Lord, we fed the poor. I went to church every Sunday. No, Lord. Those are works. Those are works. Right. That's what they're going to tell him. That's yeah, what we're going to... So, so look. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Yeah, depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. Yeah, I know. That's the dividing line. No, no, no. So if you're walking in drunkenness, you're no. working iniquity. And you can be deceived about if God knows you or not. Okay. And you're actually you're actually making a bad picture of what true biblical Christians are. Yes, you are. This is the false gospel in America, man. You've been a partaker of a false gospel because it doesn't have any power. You can be delivered out of your drunkenness. You can you can be delivered out of your sin. No, I'm, you told me with your own mouth you you get drunk. No, I do. Yeah, you do. So I didn't I didn't I didn't misjudge you there. I, I asked you if you've been drinking and I smell it on your on your mouth. Okay, so 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 repent and stop. Why? Because that because that drunkenness is taking you to hell. But why do why do I need you to tell me? I, you don't need me. Okay. This is God's word. I'm okay, giving you okay, God's okay, word. Okay, okay. So, so you don't need me, but I'm here telling you that. You don't need to tell me. That's what but I'm telling you that because and, and, I love you. And, and here's the thing: is, is you don't need to. You don't need to force people. We're not. We're not. We're not chaining you to the sidewalk. You can walk away. That's not force. We're, we're exercising our freedom of speech in America. Absolutely. And and we don't, you know, we're not forcing people to be out in public. We're not chaining them yeah. down like the communists did yeah. in torture yeah. chambers and locking them in a room and yeah. playing things in well, their ear here, constantly. Here's, here's the thing, here's the thing is, is since you've been on this sidewalk, I have not heard you tell a single soul, walk a single soul that they're loved. Yes, I have, actually. I, I, have I talked about God's love. No, and, no, and, no, and no, I, no, 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 no. Earlier I, I did. I'm not asking yeah. that. I'm not asking I already that you did. talked about God's love. Yeah. I'm talking about you genuinely but they, telling people that they're wrong. Okay, what does the Bible say about telling sinners? People that, telling people that, hey, you know what? You're a great person. You're awesome. No, that's not what Jesus said. That's not what Jesus preached. Jesus didn't go to sinners and say, hey, you're a great person. You're awesome. I love you. Bye-bye. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus didn't go to sinners and say, I love you? No, he did not say that I love you to sinners. He did not say that to sinners. Where, show me a scripture. When Jesus went to a sinner and said, I love you. You're such a great person. Oh, I just wanted to let you know I love you. By the way, my name's Jesus. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep walking in your sin. Yeah. We got to wrap it up. Okay. Okay. Just tap me on the shoulder. Yeah, we're good. That's not what Jesus preached. Jesus said, repent of your sin. He said, unless you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Don't you understand what Jesus said? Yes, he loves you in this. This is how Jesus loves you. 
that he died for your sin so that you could stop being a sinner and get yourself in right relationship with God the Father. As a sinner, he doesn't love you the same as he loves his own children. God loves me more intimately as one of his children than you as a sinner. But God wants to give you that gift of God's love. You see, you think God loves you in your sin. And he's just so happy that you're walking in your sin that one day he's just going to accept you into the kingdom of God as a sinner. No, that is not what the Bible teaches. That's not what Jesus preached. His love was manifested on the cross. And you're not even forgiven until you come to him and confess your sins and repent as Jesus told you to, to turn to him by faith. You can't clean yourself up and God will give you the Holy Spirit. He wants to show his love to you. He does not love you in the sense that you're a sinner and he accepts you in your sin as a homosexual or a fornicator or a liar or a drunkard. That is a false gospel. That is a demonic message. That's not God's love. God's love wants to deliver you out of sin. He wants to make you holy so you can truly experience what God's love is. That's why you got to have a good time because you don't have God's love. You go to sin. No, I won't. Instead of turning to God's love, you turn to sin. I think I said that yeah, I think you did, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Instead of instead of turning to God's love, you turn to your sin. So turn to Jesus. God can make you a saint. Do you want to be a saint? Do you want to be holy? Or do you want to continue in your sin and pretend to love Jesus and pretend to know God? You see, that's what people want. They want to have their cake in sin and, and think in their vain imagination that God is just going to let them in. That's not just. I don't want to be around sinners in the kingdom of God forever. I want to be around the saints of God. That's why we go to sinners so that they can become brothers and sisters in Christ. So that we can have a true relationship in Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in John Now we'll go to Matthew. We'll talk about the narrow way. In Matthew 7 Jesus said Enter ye in at the straight gate the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and many there be that go in thereat. Jesus is saying that the way to destruction is very wide and, and a lot of people are going in there. And a lot of them believe that they believe in Jesus, but yet their fruit shows otherwise. But Jesus said no, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So Jesus is saying in his foreknowledge, not because he's predestined it, but because he knows what man will do, he can say, there's only going to be a few that find the narrow way. That means there's going to be more people going to the lake of fire than going to the kingdom of God. I don't want that to be you. And neither does Christ. The Bible says that it's not God's will that any should perish. That's his desired will. But that all should come to repentance. But God knows that all are not going to come to repentance because men are evil. Women are evil, and they would rather choose their sin than coming to Jesus, according to John chapter 3. Where it says in the book of John chapter 3, this is the condemnation. See, this condemnation is already upon you right now. The wrath of God is already on you right now as a sinner. And the love of God is calling you out from under the wrath of God. The love of God is died. The love of God was manifested in Christ Jesus who died on a cross that you might be delivered out from under his wrath. And this is the condemnation. Not that that it says that light is come into the world. Light meaning Jesus. He is the light. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And your deeds are evil if you're walking in sin. If you're walking in drunkenness, 
if you're walking in homosexuality, if you're walking in sodomy and fornication, having sex before marriage, lying and blaspheming God, partying it up and smoking it up and drinking it up in the world, this shows that you're a sinner. I used to be a sinner too. I was a DJ, hip hop artist, fornicator, drunkard. Was there a point? I didn't get high maybe a couple times. I didn't like the way it felt. But nevertheless, I was a sinner, a blasphemer. And when I realized God's love for me, that he's going to save me out of my sin, and that I was on the way to the lake of fire, I was like, Lord, take my sin. I can't do it. Take it away from me. I want to live for you. Is that your heart today? It says, and this, this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. So you people that say I love Jesus and do evil, you don't love Jesus. You hate Jesus. You show with your works and your life and your heart that you hate Jesus. Even though your lips say, I love you, Jesus. Tell him two minutes. We gotta two minutes? Okay. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God, that they are worked in God. You see, so don't say you love Jesus and call yourself a sinner. That is not loving Jesus. Loving Jesus is submitting to him. Submitting to him. Loving Jesus is following him and obeying him by the power of God. You're not going to be so tough on the day of judgment when you stand before God Almighty. You're not going to be enjoying yourself and yelling things at the preacher like a coward on the day of judgment when you stand before God. See, right now, Jesus said, fear the Lord and depart from iniquity. Jesus said, fear the Lord. Jesus said, repent. Turn from your sin. You see, that's God's love. That's God's mercy call. And my prayer today is that you would hear the word of God because your sin is leading you to destruction into a lake of fire where Jesus said the worm never dies and the flame never dies. There'll be no more pleasure in your sin in the lake of fire anymore. And you're going to regret that you rejected Jesus. You're going to regret that you chose to be a sinner in this life. And I don't want that for you. And neither does God. And that's why he said, turn away from your sin and believe on Jesus Christ and be cleansed by the blood of Jesus by faith and receive the Holy Ghost that can keep you from being a sinner. And then go into a world and tell them the same thing. Even though the world hates you, Jesus said, it hated me first. Jesus said, it hates me because I tell them that their deeds are evil. And so the world hates us. Because our Lord and Savior, they hate it. But it doesn't have to be so with you. You can turn to Jesus, receive his love, receive his mercy call, and turn from your sin. And believe by faith in, through grace that teaches you to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. And turn to him with all your heart. And believe on Jesus. Amen. I kept thinking about the end and then he's like, no, you keep going. Kept coming out. <laughs> Amen, bro. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. There's other messages on there that you can look at. Sorry, H E R H E R A L D S. Harold. Yeah. Harold. For the King, who is Jesus. Okay. Yeah, and uh, actually, these uh, brothers are from Georgia. I yeah, actually live Georgia. in Ohio. Okay. That's my. YouTube yeah, he's got a YouTube there too. And I do a okay. weekly live stream if you want to. I I answer questions there. Yeah, yeah, yeah he can. Questions. Okay. It ain't just Christians that come in there. So. Yeah. Right. All right. Right. Yeah, and here. Take that. They, they are just. Ruthless. Well, we, we've seen a lot worse. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's happened? He's been knocked out. Knocked out. I've been spit on. I've had dog dude thrown. thrown. He's had poop thrown <laughs> at him. I mean, I've been, in, I've been in pride events in Atlanta and Augusta. And just, you know, it's just, we don't get offended. We love that. Right. We just want to tell them the truth. Just like we tell you the truth. Right. I mean. So, well, so yeah, I mean, that, it, 
go check out that channel. I will. Read through that. That that helps you. That's just scripture that yeah. talks about mankind and God and how to come to Him. What are you? I'm kind of Catholic. But... I, I used to be Catholic. It didn't do me any good. Okay. Because the you know I, I, the Catholic catechism doesn't line up with the Bible. Some some of their doctrines in there have been added by popes over 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 history. Yeah. And there was no real power to deliver me from sin in the Catholic Church. Yeah, I was an altar boy. I went to the sacraments, all yeah. that stuff. I, I, but then I grew up and I became a hip hop artist and a DJ and a drunkard in college. I got born again in college in Illinois State. So. That's where I'm at. I'm... I kind of fell out during high school. Yeah. Now I'm back on track, and I heard you. Yeah. I drove by, and I said I got a parking spot. Hey man, what's your name? Faith. Faith. Actually. That's Faith. a good name. Yeah. <laughs> what's your middle name? Francis. Okay. After we got a little girl in our fellowship called Faith. So it's Faith. That's crazy. Yeah. So. That's beautiful. That's cool. Yeah, man. Faith, man. God gave you that name for a reason. Yeah. My parents named me it because of 9/11. Oh really? Yeah. They kind of said, well, at this point, like you know the country's falling apart yeah all you really have at this point is faith and hope so it's true maybe. yeah you know give yourself to jesus just forget about catholicism forget yeah. about any religion just start seeking jesus just jesus get a bible you know open it open it. read the gospel of john and see what he did for you you know what i'm saying Look i've never did. been a bible reader i've never been able to get myself around to it like, yeah i don't really care well that'll give you a start right there faith. can't wait god will put faith in you and, and he'll make you a new woman a woman of holiness and righteousness. You'll say so in other women. I told you this place would be busy. Yeah, bro. It's crazy. Take care, babe. Take care. Take care. Take care. I thought she was with the guys that you're talking to for a sec. I'm going to pray for her right now. Yeah, I know. We pray in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I'll preach the God. 